and for those of you guys that haven't been in the streams or have or you know haven't been listening to the things that are going on on twitter that twitch specifically has laid out as things that they're doing here on the channel on their platform not necessarily the channel but their platform i just want to go into it a little bit so this has been a concern like i said this has been a concern on my mind for quite a while it's no secret to anybody that's been into the streams recently especially when i attempted my 24-hour stream earlier this week that you know there that I, I was talking about it and but it's been sitting with me for quite a while now i started voicing my frustrations during the 24-hour stream but i now need to get but but last night i was sitting in bed thinking and i was like i i have an idea of what i want to do but i need to take into consideration you guys as the community my viewers people that want to watch day in and day out so i need to get talk to you guys about my frustrations about all my concerns and get what you guys think about the whole situation and get what you guys would like i want to i want to make sure that not only am i doing what's best for me but i'm doing what's best for you guys you know for being able to provide the best content possible for all of you so a while back a long time ago i'm not going to scroll that far twitch announced a new thing called ads manager ads manager so those of you guys that don't know when you first click into a twitch vod note whether you're an affiliate or not you pretty much get ads right and at like anywhere between one and like nine ads can run and so they released a thing called ads manager where content creators in the affiliate and uh partner programs could schedule ads out they were guaranteed like a 50 percent increase in ad revenue if they were to do this if they were to use the ads manager they promised out as you can see right here in the big purple box that affiliates can now earn the new 55 percent ad revenue split basically the way they're saying this is if you set up your channel your scheduled ads to run three minutes worth of ads every single hour, you will get a 55% revenue split between ads and you. 55% of whatever you earn. Sounds great, right? More money for running ads. It also disables pre-rolls. Like you can have it, hey, keep pre-roll ads or disable them. I, have them. I had them disabled. Basically what that means is when I disable pre-rolls, it means as long as I have this ads manager running and an ad. So let's, so for example, if I were to run an ad right now, it would disable pre-rolls, which means when you first click into the stream, you would not have ads when you first click on for 20 minutes. You would not have any ads when you first click into the stream for 20 minutes. But a new set of ads would be scheduled to run based off of how I set it up every 20 ish minutes and you'd have three minutes worth of ads so i have it a minute here a minute here and a minute here that's what i had basically every 20 minutes roughly like you earn more money but at the same time a lot of people aren't like for the big streamers i talked about this a little bit i saw a clip on twitter i i wish i remembered who it was um so that i could pull it up but i saw a clip where a guy showed off he had his friend with him he showed off his ad revenue and he's a bigger streamer he he go he's full time with it and he was talking about his ad revenue before using ads manager the month before he used ads manager he was making i think it was like 6 to 7k a month from just ads just ads when he did the ads manager he went up to like 100k like it was a massive jump like it was massive when he used the ads manager and he, and he claimed that it was because of his community. He already had built a community that was willing to sit and watch through the ads because the ads didn't bother them. They were willing to sit and watch through the ads because they loved the community. They were, they were going to support this streamer no matter what. Okay? 100%. You know, they didn't care how many ads were run. They were willing to sit there because they loved the guy. They wanted to be there. They had a good community, right? He was a full-time streamer. He brought his friend in. Who was there and his friend talked about and his friend is a little bit bigger than me i want to say he had about 1.52k followers you know he was a little bit bigger than me uh he wasn't full-time streamer but you know he was making you know you know he it was like a part-time job at that point he showed that before ads manager before he ran the ads manager he was making about 3k a month from ads 
And I was like, hey, that's pretty good before Ads Manager. That's, that's actually pretty good. Then he showed what happened after he ran Ads Manager. He went down to 1K. He was down to 1K in ad revenue. He had actually gone down the month that he used Ads Manager. And not only that, it also showed that he went down 300 followers while the Ads Manager was running. And all the people, and, and the guy who was the bigger streamer, didn't really notice a difference in his followers. They kind of stayed the same. They went up, went down, you know, like any streaming does. But it wasn't a big difference. For hit for this smaller streamer, though, it hurt. 300 followers is a big hit. Twitch also released this new thing called feedback. Basically, I don't know if you guys can do it on my channel. I don't know. I haven't seen anything. I Or if you guys aren't doing it, then I haven't, you know, it hasn't sent me an email. But there's a new thing called feedback that they've released where viewers can click and give their feedback to the streamer. Whether they like the stream or don't like things they like, things they dislike, right? It's a feedback feedback thing and the streamer that smaller streamer the feedback he was receiving from said followers that were leaving was too many ads they didn't want to stick around for the ads so not only did it hurt the ads manager not only did it hurt his ad revenue it hurt his community his community got smaller because too many ads were being ran i tried it I took my month before ads manager and my month during ads manager. During the ad, so then I decided to test it out. See what you guys enjoyed. See how it would affect my community, my chat. So the month, keep this in mind. This was about two or three months ago that I did this. I took the month before I activated my ads manager. I was sitting at about $12 a month for ad revenue. You know, I'm a extremely small, you know, channel. 495 followers currently, you know you know average of three viewers a stream you know really small and I'm, I'm not saying that's bad right i think that's amazing for for what we've got but i was averaging about 12 dollars, and then i activated ads manager for a month and many of you guys remember this many of you guys were tuned into streams this was recently it was about a month or two ago we went down to 440 followers during the month that i was doing ads manager and my ad revenue went down to two dollars a month because nobody wanted to watch the ads Everybody, as soon as an ad would run, left. Viewers was at an all-time low. It was the lowest month that I've had streaming on Twitch since I came back earlier this year. The lowest average views. These, and fi over 50 followers gone. Since then, the last two months that I've had Ads Manager off, we're back to $4.95. And my ad revenue is up to $8 an hour. Eight, $8 an hour. $8 a month for ad revenue. So for me, just like with that other small streamer, I activated Ads Manager under the promise from Twitch that I would see an increase in, not only in revenue, but also in community, you know, growth. Like basically overall channel growth. Gone. Under the promise of Twitch that I'd see growth, it's gone. It went down. So that's how, that that's what where everything started kicking off was with Ads Manager. Not too long ago, literally September 21st, literally just a few weeks ago, Dan Clancy, who is the president from Twitch, released this statement. Um, he just wanted to talk about um, the subscription revenue shares, right? And this is where things really started kicking off. Before we talk about what's happening next, we need to share some information for context. For subscriptions, we use a baseline revenue share of 50-50 on the net revenue from those earnings. The vast majority of Twitch streamers have these terms in their agreement. However, for some time, we did offer standard agreements with premium subscription terms to select streamers as they grew larger. This isn't something we've talked about publicly, but such deals are common knowledge within the streamer community. Historically, we didn't have a consistent framework to determine who would receive these deals and when. Over a year, we made the decision to, to begin to stop offering these premium agreements to new streamers not already on these terms. Basically, every affiliate on the platform is at 50 50 some partners based on how their contract alignment came out to be could have had higher here's a few problems they noticed first we had not been transparent about the existence of such deals second we were not consistent in qualification criteria and they generally went to larger streamers honestly that makes sense why pay out the small streamers that aren't as successful when you could you know pay you know you're not going to make as much money from them finally we don't believe it's right for those on standard contracts to have varied revenue shares beyond uh based on the size of the streamer so now they're saying that it's not right for just basic contracts 
to allow some streamers that are showing promise and showing growth that are beyond compare to have better pay. It's not fair to, let's say, like, I don't be honest here. If someone like me, if someone were to compare my channel to someone else's channel, like Kai Sinat, for example, one of the more recent guys that's exploding, I would say give him the money. Give him the better split. He's doing great things over on his platform. He's growing out the wazoo while I'm just kind of steadily growing, right? That's fair. But for them, now for them to say, hey, Kai Sinat over there and me, even though Kai is doing amazing, keep him on a 50-50 split. Even though he's doing amazing things right there, keep him on a 50-50 split. Because it's not fair to me. Honestly, what's not fair is to him. In an ideal world, all streamers would be on the same set of terms regardless of size. Again, a dumb thing. I disagree. If someone, let, I mean, Chaos is a business, man. He can agree. If I were to go up to a contractor, two different contractors, one con, the, both of them are offering $300 for their services. One contractor has a history of being trash, while the other one has a history of being notoriously amazing with his stuff. Wouldn't you pick that guy? And pay them more? Like, wouldn't you guys be willing to pay more for a better job? I, me personally, I would be much more willing to pay someone $700 for an amazing job than $300 to just get it done and be shit, right? That, that's just me personally. So they're saying in an ideal world, all everybody would be on the same basis. That's like saying fucking me and, I, and as much as I want to hype myself up and say that I'm worth it, that's like saying, hey, Twitch, you're going to pay me X amount of dollars, the the exact same amount that you're going to pay Pokimane, XQC, Ninja, Tifu, you know, Cloaksy, all Nick Merckx, all these other streamers that are way bigger, way better. That's, that's exactly what they're saying. That me, who's a way smaller channel, does not get as much attention and whatnot, which is fine. Like I said, I'm not saying that's a bad thing is getting paid the exact same as Nick Merckx. Where, where, where's the ideology in that? However, instituting that policy would have a negative impact on the streamers currently on these terms. Obviously. That letter is just basically a slap to the face to every single streamer out there. To the, mo to the very successful guys. Granted, the very successful guys, the 50-50 split may not hurt them as much. I mean, it still hurts. That's a big cut in their, in their revenue. That's a big cut in their pay. Anybody would be pissed if you cut their pay. Now, this is where I bring up why I need your commute, why I need the feedback. YouTube and Twitch. There are pros and cons for both sides. So this is where I need your guys' help. I have an idea of what I want to do. Okay? I think I know what I want to do as me, myself, and I, Jayware. However, there's one crucial thing that I have not done the past couple times that I it's come down to YouTube or Twitch. Do I make the switch or do I not? And that's you guys. I have not considered you guys as a community. I have not considered you guys as viewers. So that's where I pose the question. What platform do you guys watch the most? What platform would you guys be willing to stay on? Would you guys be willing to transfer over to YouTube? Would you guys want to stay on Twitch, right? I want to know what you guys think. What you guys want. Because there are three options available to me now. I either stay on Twitch. Stay as an affiliate and be exclusive to Twitch. You know, as soon as I figure out what I want to do for videos, I can post videos over to YouTube, right? As I figure them out. I can completely switch over to YouTube. Say goodbye to Twitch. Just go over to YouTube and just work my ass off on YouTube. Keep doing what we've been doing over here just over there and grow over there i end my affiliate program here on twitch and i stream to both twitch and youtube at the same time those are my three options and i want to know what you guys think